Well, folks, what a show we have for you today, because this is the live stream we did this past weekend for our Patreon subscribers, patreon.com slash late night. And uh, what you're going to hear is the audio from most of that episode. But there were certain super fun, extremely hilarious, if I do say so myself, visual components that uh, you won't get in, in this version. So go to patreon.com slash late night to see the video version over there of this and many, many other episodes and to support the show. We're going to be doing these live streams uh, once a month. So sign up over there for access to those. And thanks for supporting the show. And there we are. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well. How'd that work for you? It was great. As you could see, but nobody else could see, I was kind of losing my shit in the corner because uh, every time you restarted it, it got funnier, even though I knew that was going to be the bit. Now, tell me if you had this experience when I brought the Lorax back and then started the countdown again, it wasn't funny until like the third time. <laughs> Yes, it, it very much the uh, what's new pussycat into it's not unusual back to what's new pussycat. Mm -hmm. We're streaming. We are indeed Baby, streaming. We're streaming. This is a live. Wait, Brian, can you do a uh, Don Pardo? Uh, what do you want me to say? What do you think I want you to say? Do you want me to? I don't know. I mean, I would never presume to know what you're thinking. That would In be, regards to this being uh, a live episode. You want me to do live from Los Angeles? It's late night with Brian Wecht. Is that what that you is want? what I wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Was that exactly what it was? Yeah. What? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> I say Don Pardo. What the fuck else was it? Would it be? Well, he was the announcer for a lot of things. I believe he was uh, the original Jeopardy announcer, the Art Linklater version. But I don't know. Maybe you're an original Jeopardy fan. <sighs> You're in some real jeopardy yeah. right now, Brian. There. That's the reaction I've been looking for. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Welcome to... Hi. I, this isn't our first live episode recording, but I want to say it's the first. It's morally the first. Morally I the think. first. Although the first one, we yeah. did get the incredible gaslighting everybody into thinking you have marital discord. <laughs> Which is maybe one of the funniest you, things that's, that's ever happened in the history of the show. Do you, yeah, do you want to describe what happened for, uh, this was year, this was like three, maybe four years ago that this happened. So yeah. do you want to describe what happened? Uh, so we did a live episode, me, Brian, and special guest Vernon, and I think we had some other folks pop in. I maybe forget. Maybe Jory? No, I don't think so. Maybe? Uh, no. okay. but That's right. I was not speaking terms with him. Yeah. Well, time. Brian and Rachel were doing this bit where Rachel would come into the room and they would argue and then leave. The thing is, is that the moment and this happened a couple of times, the moment the episode finished recording, I got a private message from Vernon saying like, woof, is everything OK with them? I felt so uncomfortable because <laughs> he 100 percent thought it was real. Oh my and re-listening to that episode with that in mind, you can like hear it. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's and from all for. OK, I had the reaction I love to have, which is the the knowledge that I had done. Rachel and I had done a successful bit that made someone feel uncomfortable, but also then immediately feeling guilty for making a dear friend feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. which means I don't know. That's success. Yeah, I love it. Or like when people took the twerp and. NSP Twitter beef seriously that one was really funny to me yes that one I really liked so for context there I think it was to promote a twerp tour or something like that they had uh they had asked me to do a thing with them and they booked a cameo from me that I then recorded as if I as if the phone was ringing in the middle of the night and I like so you could hear me like fumbling with the the lamp on the nightstand and I picked up, I was like what's going on the 
like anyone would ever record a cameo phone call. Right. Uh, and yeah, and some people uh, seem to think that that was uncool. Yes, it happened. I, in fact, saw people saying that they didn't want to listen to or support the show anymore because Brian. Had, well, that's the goal. Was, yeah, exactly. We're trying to actively alienate yeah. the audience as much as possible. Layton, Ting. it's a live stream. Let's get canceled. Let's get canceled today. How about that? Do you know, I had multiple anxiety dreams last night, one of which was that I slept through this um, mm -hmm. because I had been beaten severely <laughs> and was in a coma <laughs> quish mark. Okay, and you cool. were really so mad cool. at me and I like finally checked my phone and I had like a million notifications that were like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I, I, got, I got my ass kicked. <laughs> and then the other one was, I think, saying s something... I, I, I don't know about you. I have constant dreams of being canceled. And because I can read in my dreams, which, you know, mm -hmm. people talk oh, about. that's right. Yes, we've talked about this. Talk about lucid dreaming of like, oh, if you look at a clock and you know that it's not real. I can't do that because I can read tweets in my dreams. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend We call it. them posts on X now, just to clarify. I wasn't 100% sure what you were talking about for a second. This isn't legally actionable, but I am going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's not like we don't have, wait, how many? 45 witnesses? 45? Uh, Hello. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's, that's a that significant fraction. 44 more than I was expecting. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so excited to be doing this. I was, I was telling you before, uh, because it's been a while since we've strum uh, on Friday, I was like, how the fuck are we going to get the tech for this together? But it was very easy. We started, I don't want to buzz market a platform here but uh when i was on uh the hawk a few weeks ago they were using Streamyard and raving about it and so i thought i'd play around with it and it's been great so uh it was very easy to get everything going and now it's just working wow the stream i strumped yeah that's right i'll i'll admit that i actually i i find the phrase the scream i scrumped cringe but everything i do is cringe so it's a, is, who am i to throw stones in a cringe house is that from something the scream i scrumped thing that people say uh, it is yeah also slam your happy birthday i'm looking at the chat now <sighs> great so this is an episode of late night with brian wecht i am late and last name not night that's brian wecht wait oh mm -hmm. shit because we're right next to each other we can do a wait no <laughs> wait yeah which way is it <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's okay. go. Okay, wait, 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 hold on. And then I got the angle. Wait, there we are. Wait, let's let's high five. Ready? Don't <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna do a clap sync. There, we should do a clap okay. sync. Ready? So three, two, one, clap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's top tier. That was really okay. So if I want to point to you, your wait, it's the angle. It's not the side now. It's the angles. So you're right <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, look. There's Layton right there. Or you know what? I could do this. I love ET. ET phone like, home me, like bro. A, check out this broad. <laughs> like, ET phone right. Come on. Let's go. ET phone oh, home. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. We're right there. Ting. Fingering each other. Yeah. That's the face. <laughs> if I, if I, I like that I can physically move away from you. <laughs> Oh my God! We have an Aaron in the chat. What? Hello. Wow. It's a gamer. Hello, Aaron. Uh, that's awesome. I didn't expect Aaron to show up. Well, this is I what know. happens when we post the link to our thing in the gamer group chat. Oh, you did that! I didn't realize you did that. I did. Ali is also here. Very nice. Okay. Cool. Great. I love it. Uh, Brian, I have a question for you. Um. I'm so sorry. I am not taking questions. Right, of course. At the moment. Um, so your child has been engaging in something that I recently popped, and I'm very curious to hear how this has been going. Oh yes. Uh, so you mentioned uh, sticky business, the cozy gaming sticker thing on the Switch, and that day I downloaded it, and she. So Audrey's threshold for gasping is generally pretty low, but when I showed it to her, she went, <gasps> "Oh!" The other thing she does now, which I think is very cute, is when she gets very excited about something, such as the uh, the new uh, God, what's Echoes of Wisdom trailer, uh, the new Zelda game where you get to play as Zelda for once. Uh, I showed it to her, and she went, "Frickin' yes, frickin' yes," which is very cute. 
um, because there's nothing cuter than a child swearing, except a child yeah. almost swearing, which was great. Uh, so uh, I, I showed her sticky business and she went hog wild on it. She Love it. loves it. I couldn't I haven't watched her. She showed me a bunch of the stickers she made uh, initially, and I haven't seen it in a couple of days. So I don't know what the what the latest wow, is. I'm but curious she's very, how her sticker very business is going. About it. I'll ask her. I've just been trying to like push the limits of what is acceptable to make in the stickers and like there are such as well there are a couple of words that they have you realize by the way if you send me screenshots I can post them on here if that's possible I don't have it's not my, okay, my switch is in my bed Layton you gotta calm the fuck down <laughs> You gotta calm down. It's too much. Okay. Um. Well, there's like a tombstone graphic. I can already feel I'm gonna be too aggressive on this. Yeah. Episode. No. Of course. That's how it always goes. Uh. Yeah. There's a tombstone one, and then like two of the games, and you can tell that you can do numbers, but they don't give you letters, and it's like you know that they they knew that fuckery would happen, but uh. Oh yeah. Literally. I did a tombstone, and one of the words that you have is wholesome, and the other one is games, so it's R.I.P. to wholesome games, uh, <laughs> which is rude of me. It's not true, but... Uh, well, I'll tell you what's been happening for me in gaming news uh, this week. Uh, I just started playing the new Elden Ring DLC. I know, and I know this because this will come up in Peaches later, but we had a record number of gamers in the voice chat the other night, and... Uh, have hogan was playing the elden ring dlc and i got to witness brian backseat gaming which i've never i was, I was provide no, no 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 backseat gaming implies that i wasn't 100 percent right about was saying I, my advice was helpful and actionable which are the two things advice has to be in order to be useful Backseat gaming included, doesn't necessarily mean laden laden i'm speaking uh it included advice such as Maybe try hitting him or get out of the way. Simple. Right. right. You would think. Except yeah. Half Hogan seemed uh oh maybe maybe not so great at Elden Ring. What you the moment he got off the call, you immediately started shit talking his playing. Yeah, he was fucking it up. <laughs> I mean So anyway, I, I thought what I was saying was fun, useful, and funny. Aaron says, I believe you told him that he should press R B to attack. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured maybe he didn't know how. I, I was concerned, genuinely, that Have didn't know how to hit people in Elden Ring. I didn't even know the guy played Elden Ring because we never talk about it. And so here he is playing the DLC, and he's just getting his ass handed to him by uh, a recusant. And uh, I was, he seemed to not be getting any, uh, any, any hits in. And I had a moment where I was just looking out for my friend where I was like, maybe the guy doesn't even know the first fucking basic thing about Elden Ring, which is how to how to hit somebody. So I decided to to offer some useful advice. It's funny because I was only half paying attention to the Elden Ring stream, because to be very clear, there were perhaps a dozen people in the voice chat with four separate games being streamed. <laughs> It was yes. Elden Ring, Guilty Gear, Helldivers, question mark, and then four of us playing Dead by Daylight. And I was oh, one I of the ones saw, playing Dead by Daylight. I only saw the Dead by Daylight one. I didn't realize there were there were other games too. Yeah, yeah. As the chat grew, there was a lot there was a lot more. Mm -hmm. So attempting to make call outs on Dead by Daylight uh, as other gaming was happening was a bit chaotic. Yes. But it's but but to 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 for, and this is a first on the show to correct you, uh, I when uh, when we were watching have play Elden Ring, I had not yet started playing the DLC. I knew it was out, but I hadn't started playing it yet because I was replaying the game, and you need to get to a certain point to play it. And I was just almost there. So uh, since then, as in the intervening day, two days, whatever it is, I got to that point in the game, beat the boss, Moog, the Lord of Blood, of course, and uh, touched the little egg hand, and I'm now in the Shadow Realm and having a great oh, okay. time uh, beating weird fucking monsters. The Lord of Blood shows up for me every month and sends me to the Shadow Realm, so <laughs> get on my level. That's great. Actually, wait, hold on. I think I might have something for this i thought we could do a special uh uh corner 
for you to say something. There we go. <laughs> Wait, are, are you also able to make my video really tiny and oh, physically put that? me in the corner? Can, can I do that? I don't, actually don't know how to do that. Let me see. I don't know how to do that real time, and I don't want to fuck with it too much. That would be very funny, though. I, I did, I, I, I did I make would another one, adore though. adore that. Oh, no? I made another one. <laughs> do you want to read what these say for the people not watching the video? No, they should be punished and sent to the Shadow Realm because they didn't pay for the Patreon to get on here Hold and on, watch the live stream. Hold on, let me click over to you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, go off, queen. <sighs> for those not watching the video who are heathens and dilettantes and fake fans and haters, uh, Brian has put up a graphic that says woman's corner in front uh, of my video. Technically, it's an overlay. Not to correct you. Technically, it's an overlay. Put, put the other one up as you say that. Yeah. <laughs> technically, it's an overlay, Layton. <laughs> All right. There we go. An now over the over now the overladen says, listen to a man. <laughs> I used all of my graphic design knowledge, which is I made a purple rectangle and wrote in it. Should we do an outdoor stream sometime? If you hot I, tub I, stream, I, yeah, maybe. hot tub stream. I would do a hot tub stream. Sure. Well, we did have the idea of doing bathtub. Right. Streams, yes. But right. the bit is that we're both fully clothed. Fully clothed. Yes. <laughs> In separate yes. bathtubs with computers precariously over the body of, of, of water. Oh, man. Have you ever seen? I've never seen a room that has more than one bathtub in it. Have you? No. Like adjoining tubs, right? Yeah. I've seen like a big tub, like a hot tub or a tub that's big enough for two people. But I've never seen a, a room with two bathtubs, two standalone bathtubs in it. Yeah, there's been a shower in a tub, but not hot. That's right. Yeah, right. Like dueling clawfoot tubs would be kind of a vibe. Yes, I agree. Um, we could do it. We could do a tub stream. Is your tub sittable in? Define sittable. We, could you do this from your tub is the question I'm asking you. I certainly could. I would place you where you belong on my toilet because <laughs> you know how small Indeed, my bathroom yeah. is it's like in the it's sims it is a, yeah. it is a four tile bathroom mm -hmm. uh, and two tiles for tub one tile for toilet one tile for sink anybody mm -hmm. taller than like five four is struggling in there but yeah so we have a we have a soaker tub that we got put in in the bathroom specifically because uh, daddy likes to take D bubble baths. <laughs> how you know. did I know you were going to say that daddy loves to soak? Daddy does love to soak. Tragic. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we got it so I can take my my bubble baths and soak and enjoy my middle-aged life. Brian, what's your preferred bubble bath? Uh, I've been a, uh, a Dr. Teal's person for a while now. Uh, it seems to seems to work well. I like some of the the scents. The lavender is pretty nice. They have a green one, which I think has like eucalyptus or something in it, which I also like. Uh, yeah, I've been a Dr. Teal's uh, daddy for a while now. And you're not a bath bomb guy. I am not. I find that bath bombs often leave kind of a residue, like they feel oily yeah. in a way I don't like. Oh, interesting, because I love feeling oily and glittery after a bath. Many people do, uh, but I, I don't. I want to feel just clean. I actually here, here's my issue with baths. I like them pretty hot, but then you're sweating in the water, right? Yeah. So it's a terrible feeling to be in a in a bath with like soap and sweet smelling scents and mm -hmm. feel like you're getting dirtier in it because you're just. I always like feel crazy. dirtier after a bath. Do you ever mm -hmm. do the thing? Mine will not consistently do enough hot water for a full bath, full bath. So I bring an electric kettle into the bathroom so I can boil additional water and dump it in. Wow. That is the most I'm in my 20s thing I've ever heard. Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah. No, I uh, we have enough. Uh, I don't want to brag here, but uh, we have enough hot water to sustain a bath. Well, yeah, look at you, you fucking homeowner. Rub it in. Mm -hmm. I, I always feel anytime I take a bath, I take a shower. Like I rinse as the tub is draining because I just do not feel clean. I do too. I, my, my standard bubble bath MO 
is I'll bubble bath. And usually I'll watch a program or, or some such thing uh, in the in the tub. And then when I'm done and sometimes I can I can go for <laughs> I can go for a pretty long time. Uh, I can go for two hours sometimes in the tub. Wow. Uh, if I yeah, if I'm really on a roll, so to speak. Um, and, uh, then I'll take a shower afterwards. Cause the other thing, well, the other thing is if you're sweating in the tub, uh, you got to deal with your hair, right? Cause your hair is now, you're not washing your hair. Typically, at least I'm not in the tub. So then you got to get out of the tub and wash your hair. So I will right. also, you're covered in bubbles, which are a pain in the ass to towel off. So yeah. if you really want to get the full bubble bath experience, you take a quick shower at the end where you wash your hair. That's what I do. Uh, Beast Man says, "Late night with Brian Wet." Oh, I do like that. That needs to be yep. the title. We have to do this, and that needs to be the title. Both of us fully clothed in separate tubs, and if we have any special guests pop in, they must also be fully clothed in their yeah, well, respective this is, tubs. You know, uh, famously, this is a uh, well. The hot tub thing is a, a Kristen Shawl and Kirk Brownell thing. They used to do a hot tub uh, talk show in <sighs> Brooklyn. Yeah. I just so, do we know anybody who has a hot tub that we can take advantage of? I could break into Brent's house and fashion a hot tub out mm. of available materials. He'd love that. Yeah, the only thing that I've done filmed in a pool was at Brent's pool. Uh, the context, it was a power hour where uh, th that was the day that Aaron learned how to play Magic the Gathering. Really? For the first time? Yeah, it was a beautiful oh, thing shit. to witness. I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah, no, That's it was crazy. a bunch of us uh, sitting on the edge of the pool with, like, the water squirters um, trying to hit Dan square in the face constantly. It was fun. Now, that does sound fun, actually. Uh, I also filmed a thing uh, in Brent's pool. Elaborate? It was the, the dinosaur laser fight level up video. Wow. Yep. Very nice. Yeah, I had to fall into his pool. Um, do I know? I must know someone that has a hot tub. We could find a hot tub, I think. Now, would it be someone who would be willing to let me film at their house? Irrelevant. Yeah, we just sneak in. It's fine. We just sneak in. Yeah. Two um, fully clothed, I, sopping wet adults drip, leaving right. a trail of hot tub water. What would you wear? Because I would put on like a suit. Like, yeah, I need not, as many right. layers as possible. I think I would probably do a long sleeve, a layered top on it, jeans, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that feels like the way. Yeah. And then maybe not, like goggles, yeah. perhaps. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like steampunk know. goggles. Commit. Yeah. No. But that's <laughs> your thing, isn't it? <laughs> I love cogs and gears and stuff. Mm -hmm. those, those are my favorite. I love it on Double Threat when they talk about, which they do frequently, the steampunk chocolate shop, Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium. Buddy, I've been to Toothsome's, Toothsome's well, Chocolate we, Emporium. We, were, we have been to Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium. I forgot you were there. <laughs> that's a, that's called the Brian West presence. <laughs> I just remembered being there with half. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was you, me, him, and uh, Audrey. Yes, it was. What a delightful day. Yes, and Meowch was supposed to come, but he got food poisoning. <laughs> I was so sad. I was so close to, like, suffering the same fate. I was the only one who got scallops at Benihana, and I was like, oh, those that. scallops do sound pretty fucking good. You know what? Since then, I have been a little more reticent to order scallops, actually, because he got so he got destroyed by them. Yeah. Really very sad. It was very funny. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Um, there was another bit that I wanted to do on this live episode. So if you're on the Patreon and you listen to the minisodes, you already know about this. But if you're listening to this on Friday or you didn't listen to this week's minisode, there's a wonderful website. <laughs> there's a wonderful website called put up the woman's Does the Dog Die dot com which can be mm -hmm. a great resource if you, you know, have triggers that make watching things or playing things unpleasant and you can be warned of them ahead of time. Uh, and it gets, it's not just for does the dog die. There are dozens of categories of any possible unpleasant thing you wish to avoid. And I think it's mm -hmm. a great resource and I'm glad that it exists and is useful to people. That being said, 
it is so fucking funny <laughs> accidentally all the time i a love going there for movie recommendations and b mm -hmm. unintentional comedy it's incredible uh so i don't want to denigrate people who need like whatever i'm not going to get into my whole ethos on this because it's unnecessary <laughs> aaron <laughs> saying yes in the chat <laughs> we are playing this game Brian, I have pre-selected some things that I'm going to have you guess the movie or show. Okay, great. Yep. I unfortunately like didn't... Molten, like Molten, like Michael Bolton, I'm a major cinephile. <laughs> Brian, since we talked about Lonely Island bits the other day, I have had a constant rotation in my head of Boombox and The Creep, and it won't oh. fucking stop. Boiled goose. <laughs> I have to know the obsession with boiled goose for them. It shows up in like multiple shorts. Does it really? Oh, yes, I, it does. And oh. throw it on the ground. One of the items thrown on the ground oh, is that's boiled true. goose. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. If I had to guess, <laughs> what I would say here is they did it once and they thought it was funny and then they referred back to it, right? And then they referred back to that and then it became a thing. That's what I, I that's what I would guess. I but disagree. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> All right, now disagree. I disagree. Mm -hmm. And I'm bl and I'm blurry now. Yeah. Uh, you look, uh, you don't look blurry. Oh wait, now you look blurry. Yeah. Okay, great. There we go. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the correct order to do these in and Brian, will you hide the chat so you don't see cuz people oh, yeah, at home yeah, yeah. can play along. Okay. 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 Uh, I the chat is hidden. Okay, great. Um, nom, 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 nom. Okay, so the first Wait, one are is- you, Sorry, were you eating something? Just then you were making <laughs> om nom nom noises, and I was, because you're you're slightly uh, desynced here, I thought Look, for a second a, you might have been a, eating a, there's something. There's a, there's a big difference between om nom nom and om nom nom, which is the sound that I make oh, when really? I'm looking for something. A nummy, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> now I'm never saying it again. Nummy, All nummy, right. nummy. Do you want, I can say, I can make uh, num, num, num sounds all day. It's kind of my favorite. Mm. Here, let me give everybody the Brian Wecht eating simulator real quick. This is like the sound of me eating without any food. Ready? Mm. Oh, man. Oh, mm. oh, so good. Mm. Oh, oh. Mm. I am opening up Does the Dog Die for Late Night with Brian Wecht? Misophonia. Right, mm. Yes. Great. Cool. All right. So first one off the top. This is a film. All right. So you are reading things and I have to. Oh, guess yeah. I didn't. I didn't even explain film. the game. OK, so does the dog die? You can go to a movie and it'll list there are dozens of triggers and people can vote yes or no if it has it sort of like a Reddit upvote downvote system. And then there's descriptions of what it might be. And that's where the comedy is. So very top one. Does the dog die? Yes. And here's the description. The death is not shown on screen. The camera briefly shows the aftermath, parentheses, not bloody, just a small furry stillness. But if you're not paying attention, you could easily miss what it's showing to you. And first of all, mm. I picked this one because I think a small furry stillness is a beautiful turn of phrase. Yeah, uh, it's the title of my autobiography. Uh, yeah. Is it the thing? No. Here's a another small? one. Okay, this is the same movie. Yes. Are there nude scenes? Yes. And then the description. Yes, but for horror purposes. Oh, is it The Exorcist? No. Okay. Let's see. Is there DID misrepresentation? I'm, and I also for these, if it says a character's name, I'm going to be vague about the character names. Just Yeah, so sure, can't. sure, sure. Uh, blank is said to have DID, though we never meet the character, so it's impossible to know if that is correct. She's also the leader of a cult, so that's not great. <laughs> oh, I have no idea where we're going with this. Uh, leader of a cult, DID. Small furry stillness. S split? Nope. No. I got another one. Okay. Does someone fall to their death? Yes. And then description. Yes, but the character is possessed and revived as a new person right afterwards. Is it hereditary? Ding, ding, ding. It okay, is hereditary. And See, somebody got it after yeah. the first question. So. See, a movie I have not seen. 
But I know, but I figured... I have read the plot summary of enough to know what you're talking about, yes. And my favorite, I, I had to save my favorite too for this movie because they're great. Is mm-hmm. there amputation? Yes, if a head counts. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call that, I mean, look, again, I haven't seen it. Uh, it, it took to... <laughs> In one of my favorite uh, Las Culturistas moments, they refer to that uh, moment as Lil Diva Head Knocked Off, (laughs) which I think is very funny. Also, Uh, because this is a live stream and we're supposed to be interactive, uh, Bobcat correctly guessed Hereditary after the first one. So great. Good job. Nice. Um, But as I understand it, she leans out of a car window and gets kerbonked. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. But the best one, and this is maybe one of my f- up there with Midsommar's A Bear Looks Sad in a Cage. This is one of my favorite pieces of single line poetry on Does the Dog Die? Mm-hmm. Does it have a sad ending? Yes. It has a happy ending for the demon. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, let's see. The next one is a TV show. Okay. Is there addiction? Yes. Several of the characters are addicted to drugs. Breaking Bad? Fuck. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, there I have to admit that I combined it with what I know about you and what you might try to pull with this. I know. I know. I fucked this one up. But the other funny ones from that are, does someone wet slash soil themselves? Yes. A character craps his pants to avoid talking to the cops. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Um... Does an abused person forgive their abuser? No. Everyone hurt by Walter, live or dead, never forgive Walt for his manipulations on them. Uh, Is that true? uh, Yeah, I love the scene where Mike is like, Walter, I I forgive you, Walt. (laughs) But, buddy, it's okay. I get it. Dies. (laughs) Yeah, the, the thing is, is when I was looking for these this morning, it's tough finding ones that are not too obvious, are still funny, and that like are thoroughly documented. Like there are a ton of for some reason I was That's trying actually to... my favorite subreddit, are thoroughly documented. <laughs> <laughs> um actually that is a good idea. You gotta admit. You gotta admit. Uh, you gotta admit that that is a good idea for a subreddit thoroughly documented and it's it's it, it's just examples of things that where people have gotten to way too much detail about something yes um yeah the the last few that i have i've i've really fucked this up because this is in fact a lot harder to put together than anticipated but um mm-hmm. <laughs> here's one if you can guess the movie i will be amazed okay moving were animals harmed in the making uh no i watched the behind the scenes documentary and it looked like the monkey was treated very well muppet treasure island no okay uh the monkey uh let's see hmm every which way but loose you wouldn't do that um oh wait hold on is it a planet of the apes movie no that's okay. too obvious brian uh, is uh it monkey I, shines I, an experiment in fear i have more okay is there obscene language slash gestures? Yes, it's an R-rated movie. There's cussing. Hmm. And last one for this movie. Does someone struggle to breathe? Yes, kinda, but they're struggling to like live at that point, so it's more like a general struggle. The abyss? No. I don't know. What is it? Chat? Do we have thoughts? Oh, okay. Should I look at the chat for this? No! Okay, so Jesus Christ. And also, it's not Nope. It's not Nope. I wouldn't have picked... Oh, Nope would have been an interesting... I wouldn't have picked one that has, like, a straight-up actual monkey in it. The the swerve is that you may have forgotten there's a monkey in this movie. King Kong. No. (laughs) Okay. The Peter Jackson King Kong. No. Kong versus Godzilla. It's an R-rated movie. There's cussing someone struggling to basically exist the monkey was not actually harmed now i'm just gonna have to pick up the full page because now i'm really committing because you won't get this one so you're, just to, to to fill all the listeners in you are now going to the website and looking up the other things for this movie yes great 
Incredible. No one has guessed it yet, which is crazy to me. Mm. Uh, are there spiders? None in this version. Are there None. bugs? Yes. And the description is, well, what do you think? The fly? Yeah. Okay, there we go. We've done it. Was I the first one to get it? Uh, I think that always fumbles in chat got it seconds before you did. Mm -hmm. So good nice. job, everyone. Uh, let's see. The rest that I have are just ones that are funny and not you being able to guess. Yeah, do it. Uh, <laughs> well, how about this? How about this? I'm going to try to guess anyway. Okay. And then you can do the much funnier thing that's actually true. I'm going to read this exactly as written phonetically. Great. Yes. Okay, sorry. I have to read the, the, the answer too. It, are there issues of or discussions of existentialism? Yes. A pretty existentialistic film, actually. <laughs> Is it existence? <laughs> no. Oh, that would have been great. And also, I'm going to spell that E X I S T A C L I S T I C. It's like in a combination of ecclesiastical and existential. Yeah. <laughs> Slam your uh, answers, Joker. Existential. The Matrix? No. The Matrix Reloaded? No. The Matrix Revolutions? No. Kong versus Godzilla? You really got to get outside of a certain mindset. It's maybe a slightly unpredictable one. And Spirited also is away. recent. Oh, Inside Out 2. Nope. You're getting close, though, because one of the other entries for this movie is, does it have a sad ending? No, not really quote unquote sad, but kind of quote unquote emotional, like a Pixar movie. Mm. So it's not a Pixar movie. It is not a Pixar movie. Is it animated? But that's, no. All right, what is it? Chat. Final chances. What are people saying? Can I look at the ah, fucking chat ah, now? Ah, a horse in the hospital. Got it. It's Barbie. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> so, I, lo I love the idea of describing a movie... <laughs> That like your only reference point of an emotional ending of a movie is a Pixar movie. Again, well, they're I the don't, best at I, dealing with I don't emotional wanna, terrorism. I don't want to judge people on this website, but that's please, please watch something else. All right, well, that's it for Does the Dog Die? Does anybody have a good idea for right, the name the of again. that game? Yeah, what is a good name for that for that game? It's based on Does the Dog Lie? Summary judgment. Okay. Not bad. Not good, but not bad. <laughs> Nern says dead dog game frowny face. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Does the Brian guess? <laughs> What's dying? The dog? <laughs> Question mm -hmm. mark. Thank mm -hmm. you, Beast Man. You're on fire. Uh, I feel like these are I do, I really the like, dog too much. Though. I really like what's dying. <laughs> what's dying, sure, is actually... Without the dog, then it's good. Bum, yes. bum, 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 and then you put a dog bark. <laughs> yeah, woof, thump, and just that, the, that thump sound effect. <laughs> oh, what was the one that I was looking at that people were really mad about a dog dying? Oh, oh, I was on the page for Curb Your Enthusiasm, and all of them <laughs> were way too specific, but there was like three paragraphs about the episode where the rat dog gets stomped which understandable that's upsetting I, th this is true I literally the even, function of the website i can't even remember that when did that happen uh, i was season four, four, four yeah they all kind of blend together yeah they do at this point wait i took a screenshot of one of them that i thought was really funny i think maybe just because it was written in all caps where are you Oh, right. One of the most, there's a tag on Does the Dog Die for Is Santa at All Spoiled? Oh, right. So are, is your kid going to learn about Santa, Santa and God's non-existence from this film? Yes. And this is for, uh, <laughs> this is for Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I'll show you, this is written in, this is written in all caps. 
Larry has to wear orthotics for a foot-based issue, and Sammy is woken up to the sound of Larry walking through the hall, wherein she finds her mother putting money under the pillow. Parentheses comes to conclusion there is no tooth fairy. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's great. The did you watch? You probably did not watch the final season of Curve. No, I did. I I stopped watching after it went HD and everyone got got Botox. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was so jarring. I was like, huh, I'm out. Yeah, that seven year gap is pretty pretty dramatic. There were a lot of uh, yeah. advances in film technology. Yeah, no, the um, low res is there. what really does it. I'll just endlessly rewatch the producer's season. I mean, that's I, that's the I, best one. It's so yeah, good. It's fucking amazing. I also looked up the producers on Does the Dog Die, hoping for some good material, but it, you know, was not necessarily the most fruitful. Are you? Do you like the producers? The the film. I've never seen the original one. Don't crucify me. I I really like the Nathan Lane one as a musical hater. I just love Nathan Lane and He's Gary Beach is fucking incredible. Have have I talked about um I went on a date with this guy when I was in college and he really loved musicals and he was asking me if I had ever seen Avenue is, Q. Wait, is this guy Nathan Lane? Cuz if so, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> I would be honored to just breathe oh, can his you air. Imagine? Yes. Totally. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um, I, and he was like, have you, I, my, and I, of course, being polite was like, oh, what are your favorite musicals? And he was like, oh, I love Avenue Q. And I was like, I, what is that? And then he pulled out his phone and headphones and put the headphone and they were, they weren't like earbuds. It was like full on cans. So he would just like sit there. I, he made me listen to the entirety of everyone's a little bit racist in a crowded <laughs> uh -huh. coffee shop with the headphones on while scanning my face intently. And I was like, <laughs> cool and i like went to take them off at a certain point he was like no 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 you have to finish it <laughs> uh, wow. yeah good good dating strategy we did not go on a second date yeah uh, <laughs> avenue q is fun it's a fun show to see I, I don't think it's my favorite music in the world but it's a very fun show i like the concept so i'm just you know you know me and, and my also, preferences well and also it was like just getting in there when the puppet thing wasn't played out yet yeah. In fact, it was probably a big reason it got played out. Um, but yeah, Avenue Q's a fun show. <laughs> Hypo Clearing says that's entrapment. <laughs> 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 it's true. I, there's so many, oh, what? Oh, God damn it. I, I, I continue my best worst first date is a story that I can't tell on this show. Brian, you've oh, heard it. Please. Can you say anything? It's such a good story. Is there anything you can say? What can I say? There was a moment in there where he was scream singing along to songs from in, an, in the airplane over the sea. <laughs> which you know i love neutral milk hotel as much as the next <laughs> but but it's it's okay so that was part of it that was the least weird part of the date um what else can i say it starts this is, uh can i can i say a single word and you know what word i'm gonna say blueberries that wasn't on the date, though. That was the preamble to the date. Um, I just wanted to see you react to it, basically. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, a part, a part that I can say. Uh, he picked me up. We went to, <laughs> we went to Arby's. We went to the Arby's drive-through, and he gets mm. curly fries. Only curly fries. There is a Chick Fil A right next to the Arby's. He gets the curly fries from Arby's. We go to Chick Fil A. We sit down in the Chick Fil A. And he orders the waffle fries and he pulls the curly fries out of his pocket so he can enjoy both the curly fries and the waffle fries. Please this tell me the curly fries were not in a container in his pocket. <laughs> Just some loose. <laughs> yeah. Loose pocket I, fries. Oh, Bob, num, Bobcat num, num. says first red flag. I'm going to be honest. This was like the sixth red flag by this point. And this was the beginning <laughs> of the date. Um, we were going to see the movie now you see me too i had never seen oh. now you see me one <laughs> actually look those movies are terrible now you yeah, see me too bad. is better than one for sure is it, yeah i wouldn't know because i went it back is. to because i went back to his place to watch the first one on a pirated macbook and this is where i have to end the story but also where the funniest parts of the story <laughs> Bad. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> Have you ever 
left a date midway through, just like been like, I got to go. Oh, of course not. No, I have no (laughs) (laughs) self-respect. And it's also like that date. I have a second worst date that is like right up there that there are like five separate points that I also should have left on that date. But there was a guy, (laughs) one part of it, like one of the moments where I should have been like, you know what, I'm out, was when he was like, hey, you want to smoke some of this? I'm going to sell you the best weed in Savannah. And he pulls out some curly fries. (laughs) No, he in fact made an everything bagel with cream cheese and two hard boiled (laughs) eggs that he ate in front of me. (laughs) <laughs> and then was like, "Hey, do you want to watch the Star Wars? The ultimate date food. Do you want to watch Star Wars: The Clone Wars?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll watch an episode." He proceeds to show me six un- un- uninterrupted episodes of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, <laughs> but like dropping me in the in the middle of a season. Um, That's yeah, incredible. <laughs> I, the, it, as with all things in life, if they're going to be shitty, they'd better be funny, also, which they are. <laughs> I don't think you should go back to anybody's place anymore. It seems no, like that's where listen, a lot of this listen. is going wrong. Brian, after the restraining myself from calling the story that I can't tell the thing that I want to call it because it's the only thing I'll refer I, to I, it as, you know exactly mm-hmm. what it is. I know exactly what it is. After that, no, no, I am not coming anywhere near your home. In fact, I'm not going anywhere at all. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I like now Rich has a good suggestion here. Let's get him on the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, he can pontificate can about do, blueberries oh, at I can all. Do a makeover, Layton. What if I gave him? Uh, what would what would you call it if I did a makeover? What's the segment where I get wet? You know, it's like a it's like a kid, uh, bar rescue kind of thing. Bro get rescue, wet. get whacked. Yeah, but that that imply I guess so. Yeah, go ahead, put be... woman's corner over me, silence me. Well, it's the opposite. It's spot. It's it's putting you up on a pedestal. Layton, it's 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 highlighting your opinions and your voice. Now, I do believe I can. Wait, hey, talk for a minute here. I'm saying words and stuff. What the fuck? Keep fuck going. Fuck you, Brian. You fucking piece of shit. I hate. That's you. right. I muted you. <laughs> yeah. Thank anyway, you. Fernando points out we finally get to listen to a man on a podcast. <laughs> That's right. It's about time men's voices were heard in podcasting, and you know I've, I've commented on this before. Yeah. 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 Um. So anyway, uh, dating advice from me, don't go to a second location, don't go to a first location. If a man who you've never met calls you in the middle of the night to pontificate about what their ex's asshole tasted like, (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. don't then go on a date with them the next day. (laughs) Well, actually, I I have some good dating advice. Start at the second location. So it's actually the first location. Then you don't have to get to the second location. It's, I mean... It's genius, right? <laughs> um, look, just as context for these bad date stories, I had uh, I, I had more manic panic than brain cells. Uh, don't don't be like me. Yeah, I think I that's s- good dating advice. Don't what be would, like me. <laughs> what would Layton do? So here's the here's the shirt. It's what would Layton do? And there's just a big X through it. Do the opposite of Do that. Do the opposite. Now, here's, a, here's the interesting thing. Now, I have not been on many dates in my life. I've been married for... <gasps> uh, I know. What a shock. shock. I, who would have thought? Um, uh, and I've been married for a long time. Uh, so I've been married for about 17 years, which means I haven't been dating for <laughs> about three. <laughs> That joke never doesn't make me laugh. I know. And at some point, I just have to do it. Uh, But even before that, I don't think I went on any catastrophic dates. I went on dates where, like, there was just no chemistry from the get-go. But that's not a catastrophe. It just happens, right? Um, I would take that over any of the ones that I've had. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, I've told my best bad dating story on the show, Mm -hmm. which was the... Why can't your alone time include me? Yeah. Girl. Uh, but that's really the worst one. Ah, <sighs> yes, indeed. What are my other... I, 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 uh, uh. One, one involved... Um, the guy forgot we had a date 
which was a standard with him. He ghosted and stood me up a lot, and I was very desperate. Once again, more manic panic than brain cells. Uh, and I went to his place. It wasn't actually his place. He was staying at a friend's place, and he opened the door, having clearly just woken up after sleeping on the mattress in the corner. And it was really hot because we were in Savannah, and he was not super thrilled that I was there. And I was like, do you have any wait, wait, water? You were scheduled to go on a date, and he just yes. forgot and woke up. Okay. Yes. Not his house. Uh, and I was like, hey, can I get a glass of water? And he was like, the water's turned off for some reason. All I have is PBR. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like 11 a.m. Oh, okay. I was really hoping you didn't say BR there. BR? All I have is P. Uh, no, it was just just PBR. War, it was not refrigerated PBR. It was warm PBR. And then we went out on a walk so he could buy a pack of cigarettes. And then he took me to McDonald's and we got McChickens. And then we there was not a table. So we sat on the floor of not this guy's house and ate McChickens. Um, on his, not on, his mat, uh, on someone else's mattress. No, just like on the, the hardwood floor talking about John Waters. Mm -hmm. um and then i thought he didn't have any waters this is again me trying to be tactful as we're on a live stream there where his mattress was there was a, a back door that was presumably into a yard but that back door is had like a window in it and so we were doing stuff okay. that you would do on a I mattress then I look up and there's a fucking woman staring through the thing because turns out that wasn't the back door. That was the fucking front door. And this was the neighbor <laughs> coming in to check on what was happening with the water. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. I can't even say that's in top 10 most humiliating moments of my life. It's like doesn't even come well, close. What state of dress were you in at that point? Not Rich asks, what's worse, this date or getting cholera? <laughs> the fact that I have to think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, so life is cool and fun. Um, life is cool and fun. Yeah. Uh, especially on a on a chill Sunday live stream. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Welcome. I don't know how long you've been oh, here. Oh, shit. <laughs> here he is. I love this. I'm sweating so hard after, after telling those stories. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, chat, uh, like you suggested that people could give us topics to discuss or opine upon. Um, chat, what do you want to hear? We're going to open it up. It's something I've never done uh, before. We're gonna hot open takes. It up to y'all. Hot, hot takes, cold takes, lukewarm takes, all the takes. Um Give give us something to discuss here, and and we're gonna first thought best thought it. Crypt Alex asks, crypto son or astrology daughter? Astrology daughter, duh. Yeah, hundred percent. Although I do hate astrology, but yes. Uh, Rich says creationism, true and factual. Thanks. <laughs> yep. This is going great. <laughs> Oh, tier, I like this, uh, Colleen. Tier list of right-wing podcast grifters. Well, at the top, of course, is Brian Wecht. Yes. Um, Next followed under by my protege, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Jory Grivis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Although, here's the list. issue. I mean, he is hard. Jory is hard right, but I wouldn't call him a podcaster. He's a better podcaster than we are. What the fuck are you talking about? He's certainly funnier than we are. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, the end of Twin Peaks, The Return. Greatest show ending of all time. I mean, ask the question I've been asking since I was born. What year is this? Very true. Yeah. Uh, Leighton, have you seen I Saw the TV Glow yet? No, I have not seen it yet, but I loved the director's last movie. We're all going to the World's Fair, and I'm very excited to watch it. Yeah, that one looks interesting. I'd like to see that too. I've seen a. Did uh, you some see? People's... We're all going to the World's Fair. No, but I've seen good things about. I saw the TV glow, and I'd like to see it. Yeah. Vibes. Why would you say vibes? Because the movie has vibes. Oh, I see. Yes, you know, many movies do it these days. Yes, one might describe a movie as a collection of vibes. Yeah, a visual feast of vibes. <laughs> uh, the here, now, this is a good question, actually, from Captain Auk. Uh, favorite bad movie? 
Mm, many definitions of the word bad. That's why this is interesting. That's exactly why uh, I want to talk about this. Also, this wasn't a question, but this was said by DS Rockstar in regards to World's Fair. Good ass movie. So first of all, we need to talk about favorite Kevin. bad movie, but then we need to talk about good ass movies. And I mean movies for ass. I think my answer is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's a lot of ass in that movie. There's a lot of ass in that movie. Okay. Uh, I mean, in terms of a pure ass movie, you got to go with Starship Troopers, right? Indeed. Indeed. Quality ass. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. I... <laughs> Fuck, uh, I'm gonna, I'm losing film cred by the fact that I have to Google this. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to mute you? Should I mute you? No, give me Woman's Corner. Okay. There you go. <laughs> My favorite ass movie is Al Hazard Balthazar, a 1966 French tragedy film directed by Robert Bresson. <laughs> what about Hassan? It's, it's a movie about donkey, a donkey. Okay, great. Um, okay, great. Uh, favorite bad movie? Now, as you say, bad could mean many things, like incompetent, yeah. uh, dumb. The thing know. that's coming to mind, because it is a bad movie on pretty much every level, and it's not even like a, it's so bad it's good, it's just like bad and enjoyable, is Zack Snyder's Sucker Punch. You know, I've never seen that, but it I've heard so other people say this. retrograde, stupid misogynistic whatever but it's a bunch of babes in short skirts with swords and oscar isaac is creepy and has eyeliner on and it kind of fucking whips so mm -hmm. i think that maybe that's my answer that's an interesting answer um i like i definitely went through the bad movie thing you know like pre so you know when i was in college we would watch like shitty movies and this was just probably just pre mystery science theater or just when it was coming out. So we'd like heard about it, but uh, there was this movie I was obsessed with uh, in college called children shouldn't play with dead things. And it was like a, I would guess mid eighties, maybe early eighties horror film might even be the seventies. It had the type, we got a VHS with it. Um, and it was like the type of VHS case that was like the big, really chunky one. You know what I'm talking about? It's not just the sleeve. It's like the big plastic thing where you open it up and it kind of has oh, a yeah, ridge yeah. around it. Yeah. Um, and this movie, of course, sucks. So I forget. I, I haven't seen this in a long, long time now. Um, but my favorite part, not only was it just inept in every sense of the word, but uh, there was basically the idea is there some people who are on maybe an island or something i don't know and they do some kind of ritual to uh summon the dead except it doesn't work or does it so it does uh but <laughs> at one point talking about how the ritual didn't work a character says i believe she's addressing a person named alan she goes alan your summation was a bummer and what's funny about that, for those of you who don't know, is summation is completely the wrong word there. Summation is like adding a bunch of things together, right? Huh. Like summoning is the word she's looking for. So in a math context, now imagine me being a, a young math major at Williams College. Anytime I was around someone who was adding things together, gave me an opportunity to say, your summation was a bummer. So I was pretty... And everybody got the reference and clapped? As with all my references, people like them and know what they're from. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. So children, sh you should look up the cover for this. If you, oh, you, I everyone, did. It looks uh, awesome. It, it's incredible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the one I, with red, I, red text on like the gravestone or whatever? I saw many different variations. Uh, mm -hmm. Many such cases. Indeed. It's a great name for a movie. Very like retro horror kind of name no it's super giallo it's like uh don't torture yes. a duckling or whatever yeah exactly all right more a hot take speed round give us some shit chat yep oh the cell i've never seen the cell neither I have people, i and i know people, people, people love movie. it no, no i know people love it <laughs> that's not being being sarcastic uh, people yeah. i know many people whose opinion i respect who fucking love the cell now, here's another, in a similar vein, Slamuel's asking, favorite bad albums? Mm. Uh, probably The Prophecy by <laughs> Ninja Sex Party. Um, 
Uh, you beat I don't me know. to it. You beat me to it, Brian. I know. You really it's did. Too, it's it's too easy. Uh, I would not responding to this. I would not consider Dark Man a bad movie. I like Dark Man. Dark Man's fun. It's like a, it's a Sam Raimi movie. It's fun. Um, yeah. Nern says finally watched the taking of Deborah Logan. Thoughts? That movie fucks. If I don't, know I don't it at I, all. I don't remember anything else about it other than the part that rules, and that part is so great. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I've used it as a reaction gift to people before. Um, so yes. Ha, ba, 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 ba. Hot right. take on watching movies is a hobby, blows and is for virgins. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Great. Uh, now we could move on to segments here. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess we could. How long have we been recording and not just watching the countdown play indefinitely? Okay, I think we've I, got segment time. Yeah, we got plenty of segment time. I think I only played the countdown once, if I remember correctly. Um, the by the way rich is 100 percent right uh bad company by bad company from bad company is the best uh song you didn't even read the question title. no but sorry I, who cares he's exactly right uh you didn't read the original question self-titled so then you fucking do it here hold on i'll give you your thing there you go woman's corner all right go <laughs> Colonel Splendid says self-titled albums that also contain self-titled songs i.e. Boston on Boston by Boston that sounds hot but yes bad company by bad company from bad company hits the you should have factor. muted me as I said that I think that would have been the ultimate um, yeah I didn't want own. to do that again I felt like that would be too much I don't like to overuse bits hot take 80% of therapists suck I don't, I don't disagree I think that's a hot, hot take I think it's just true that's just statistics <laughs> yeah um all right, so. Hot uh, take, 80% of this yeah. podcast sucks. Well, 80%, yeah. <laughs> Do you need a break or anything? I made a little break screen for us if we need a break. Do you, you need did? a break? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm shellacked with sweat, but it's fine. We're going to push through it. Uh, the, the first segment on the show, Layton, is our pop culture recommendation segment. Now... Uh, uh, this is a segment. That was a nice impression to... of me introducing a segment. Yeah, actually, well, so can I do, uh, you know what? Maybe, should I introduce a segment? Like, can I, should I do my latent impression? Not a voice, but like a vibe impression of you introducing a segment? Sure, yeah, do it. You, uh, here, here's the deal. I'm going to introduce <laughs> the What's Poppin' segment mm -hmm. as if I was you. As if I were you. Sorry, I believe in the subjunctive okay. here. Uh, and then you can introduce the second segment uh, as if you were me. All right. Okay, great. All right, so this is me introducing... This is Layton, Layton Gray, introducing... The wait, 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 put the woman's corner up. You beat me to it. I was just about to. There we are. Okay. All right, so uh, our first segment on the show... Uh, Jesus... Uh, is our uh, our pop culture recommendation segment, and I'm ter I'm terrible at introducing the segment. You'd think I'd be actually kind of good at it right now, but I'm not. Anyway, this is what's popping, and the theme song goes here. What's popping? What's popping? Um, notes. So on Streamyard now. Now that we're on Streamyard, I can I can play the what's popping theme song. <clears throat> Indeed. Uh, everyone remember that. <clears throat> Notes on you doing me introducing the segment. I yes, think there please. should have been more fuck ups in it. And you you really didn't nail the self-loathing vibe hard enough. So Well, I did. Well, you know what? I actually thought about that, but I didn't want to come across as being too negative on you. <laughs> so I did consider that. Well, you're a failure and a coward. What was the third thing? <laughs> Um, Brian, what's popping? What's popping for me is a, uh, a, <laughs> I have been enjoying now. I wouldn't even say this is a bad TV show, but it is an easy TV show. And that is white collar on the USA network. This show, it's got the hottest person in the world, Matt Bomer. Oh, it, true. Who is comically attractive. I mean, this guy is like, it, it, nobody should be that hot. It's like, and he's so hot. This is when you know someone's hot. He's so hot that uh, they talk on the show all the time about how hot he is. 
that's when you know someone on a TV show is hot. Yeah. Uh, and it's <laughs> uh, he plays Neil Caffrey, a con man who basically uh, it gets a prison release to help the FBI. Um, and the main agent, it's sort of a buddy comedy thing. The main agent, Peter Burke, is played by Tim Decay, who some of you might know as Bizarro Jerry from Seinfeld. Uh, and it's just a fun, easy Va it's not even a procedural but it's vaguely procedural uh it's just fun everything there's like little heist things going on uh alexandra daddario is in it uh, at least briefly in the first season i forget if she comes back uh willie garson who's really great character actor r.i.p um tiffany Thiessen, uh plays peter burke's wife and she's awesome she's really great uh, it's just a really fun, easy to watch show. It's on Netflix and I've been enjoying that. I watched it a little bit when it was out, you know, whatever, 15, not 20, but like 15 ish years ago. Really right. enjoy it. And Matt Bomer's great. He's, he's really fun in this show. Uh, Brian, have so, you ever watched yeah. Entourage? No, I think I, I, I have heard people endlessly make fun of Entourage, but I have mm -hmm. never seen an episode of Entourage. Me too. Neither have I. So maybe... Yeah. Maybe we, we watch some Entourage. I think that would be entertaining mm -hmm. or miserable. I have no idea. I would, I would definitely watch Entourage. I feel like we should watch. We should, you know what we should do? We should do kind of what we did with uh, Breaking Dawn and watch the Entourage movie without having seen the TV show. Uh, no? No. Pass. Okay. That's a pass. That's a hard pass, everybody. All right. Um, Layton, what's popping with you? Uh, what's popping for me is this lovely little semi horror novel that i read called and i'm going to pronounce at least one third of this uh monstrilio by gerardo gerardo cordova um it is about a couple who have a child who is like seven years old and due to a lung issue the child dies and so the mom cuts out a piece of his lung and keeps it and feeds it and it grows into a little monster and I won't explain it any further. And I know uh -huh. how that concept sounds like it sounds like it's going to be ridiculous horror. And I it's not it was like so beautiful, so moving, mm. went so many places I didn't expect. And the thing that I read in all the negative reviews of it were like, why is every character gay? It's so unrealistic that every single character is gay. But reading it, I was like, fuck, yeah, everybody's gay. Um, so yeah, I highly hate to break recommend. it to those people, but there are some environments in which everybody around you is gay. Yeah, well, it happens. also it people who say that it's like, okay, then your friend group sucks. What friend groups you in? Because <laughs> also that yes. Um, but yeah, Monstrilio, read it. It's great. I love it. Great. That's what's popping for me. Incredible. Now, now we get to the fun stuff because yeah. you get to do your Brian impression in introducing the peaches and lemons segment. Well, now it's time for the final segment, which is everyone's favorite segment. Now, the most important part of this segment is the theme song for the segment. <laughs> 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 oh, hold on, I need, I need to get to do the full Brian mannerism that I have now had to adopt of you doing fucking this all the time. And the best part it's about this segment is the theme song to the segment. And maybe even more important than the theme song to the segment is the introduction introduction to the segment. Brian worked very hard on this theme song and there's a lot of musicality. There are a lot of different influences. There are a lot of different sounds. Uh, and ugh, how do you do this? <laughs> I'm incredible. Your ability to do this for extended periods of time is actually incredibly impressive. And every week I'm very impressed by it. And a lot of people have a lot of different reactions to this theme song. Some of them correct, some of them incorrect, and everyone's entitled to their own opinion, whether it be positive or negative. But if it is negative, they will be immediately booted off the show uh, because their opinion is worthless to me. But I always love hearing from people on what their favorite part of the theme song is for this segment, which is called What's Poppin'? Fuck! <laughs> You blew that about as hard as you possibly could have at the very end. Defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> the name of this segment is called Peaches Limits, and the theme song goes here. Peaches Limits. Peaches Limits. Ha! <laughs> 
Okay. I thought that was very good. My <laughs> one note, I thought you did my segment introduction pausing thing well. Thanks. Um, which uh, I liked. Uh, but... <laughs> DS Rockstar says IDKY, but Layton's impression of Brian sounds like Ben Shapiro. Yeah, you, well, because we I, we're, we're both somewhat nasal, although I think he's a little higher pitched uh, than I am. <laughs> Sweating and sm- and so smarter. hard from having to keep that up. Uh, I yeah. just give you a fucking second. Rich is right. It was a little more Tucker Carlson-y. Uh, oh my god, he's so right. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, the the only thing you didn't do is go on for twenty minutes. Yes, I know, but I don't have that kind of stamina. It's not, see, the trick, Layden, is to pretend nobody else is listening and just go on and on and on as if you're not wasting everybody's time. Yes. It's no, really after rather I, simple. When I, when I started looking into the middle distance, I kind of got it. Also, I'm, I'm sorry, it's so fucking hot in here. Um, and I'll go first because this is peaches and lemons. And this is my lemon. My AC works intermittently, but also spits from condensation and is turning off randomly also. So I'm mildly dying. Um, and that is my lemon. Also, there is a fruit. Are you there okay? is, yes, I'm fine. Uh, and there is a fruit fly infestation in my bathroom whose source I cannot identify. I have a million traps. I've poured boiling water down the drains. I've done all this shit. They're oh, that's still the worst. There. I hate that shit. So, yeah. <laughs> but the woke left doesn't want you to know is that this segment is called Peaches and Lemons. Uh, Brian, what's yeah. your lemon? Honestly, my lemon was the same thing. It's so fucking hot out right now. I, I we, we got so far into June without it being too fucking hot here in L.A. And this this weekend, it really popped off. And it's I hate it. I hate summer. I know this is not a cool opinion, literally. Uh, but I, I don't like it when it's light. I don't like it when it's hot. I want it to be dark and cold and then I'm much happier. Yes. Agreed. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find my, my oil blotting. You can see my, I'm, I'm glistening. With talent. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Yeah. So Um, that's my one. Hot, hot, hot. All right, now it's time for Peaches. Also, my favorite uh, song by Buster Poindexter. Now it's time for Peaches. Did I say that? I probably did. Faffel is right. I am literally melting. It's also, I'm wearing like glittery, I put glitter on my eyelids, but now like the rest of my face is approaching that sheet because I'm so fucking sweaty. Uh, someone mentioned that when we had Grant Kirkhop on, we didn't even introduce him, which oh, is right. like kind of about that fucking incredible um my peach my my first my first peach is the other night you know i've been harassing people really hard to play video games with me in the chat uh in our group chat and oh yeah you're relentless Yes, I am, because I miss gamers, and it's Dead by Daylight anniversary, and I hate playing by myself, and I want to play with my friends. Uh, And I thought I wasn't going to get anybody. We had like a dozen gamers in the chat with four separate games streaming, as mentioned previously, and it was fucking delightful. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, I couldn't believe, you know, every so often I'll just- And Brian came in. I came in, because I I was working on some, some stuff, and I just popped open the Discord, and I was like, oh my god, everybody's there. So I- joined and started chatting um yes it's always please pop in anytime you see us in there it's always a treat um my second peach is you can like literally hear the that this isn't the peach but you can hear the brain cells coming out of my body through my sweat at this moment uh (laughs) number two is the sweet release of when you finally hit a deadline that's been coming for a while and then you're allowed to simply just fucking hibernate which I've been doing, and it's amazing. Uh, And then related, third peach, is it's cold shower weather, baby. That's right, it is. I fucking love making it ice cold and putting it right on top of my scalp. I'm actually probably going to do that the moment we finish this. Nice. Uh, Yeah, so those are my three peaches. What about you? That's great. My... uh peaches are uh number one i did a uh a trey magnifique photo shoot this week 
with uh, the amazing Sela Shaloni, who is a photographer I've worked with a few times for NSP, Grumps, etc. He's really, really great local LA photographer, shoots a lot of awesome people. Uh, and we shot the cover. You for think the it's upcoming... awesome that people get shot? I do. Well, I'm very pro Second Amendment. Late <laughs> famous late, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the the we're, I'm doing a Trey Magnifique Christmas EP, and uh, we shot the cover for that, which um, was here, here's a here's a here's a sub peach, not to sub peach you, but the uh, I was looking for a space because I wanted a certain vibe to it, and then I was like, wait a minute. My it's called in sort of has that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I like that. Uh, so not only uh, did I uh, schedule the photo shoot, I also didn't have to pay for a separate studio space or peer space or whatever. We just did it at my place, and it was great. Um, so that's Peach 1. Peach 2 is, I for whatever reason, I have just been so musically inspired to write shit recently. This past week, I've been, you know, like I'm writing kind of new stuff almost every night. Uh, and really been enjoying it. So it's just some of it is just random stuff, not for any particular project, just writing, uh, which is a good feeling. So that's been really fun. Uh, and the other, my final peach is uh, Audrey is <laughs> Audrey is at Knott's Berry Farm today on her first theme park outing without her parents. She's with her best friend and her best friend's dad. And it's some kind of like, old west thing right now or something well but yeah that's how knott's berry farm is they've got is the, I, that's that's the sliders of ghost town are from the western area of the park that's like their bit see i didn't even know that i haven't I, I think i went to knott's berry farm when i was like 13 or something and i have not been since um so it's been a long time but she's off on her own with her best friend and they're having a great day so that's really great she uh this kid these two kids are like super best friends and it is so cute to watch them together uh they play minecraft and they tell silly jokes to each other and they're just you know they're both 10 ish uh audrey's 10 her best friend is almost 10 and it's just it's such a fun cute age uh and they have a great relationship so anytime they get a chance to spend time together it's always great i love that yep so those are my peaches <sighs> wowzers well, Indeed. Well, we did it. We did do it. Now, here's a proposal. Um, we finish this episode formally, and then, you know, that'll go on the public feed, and then we hang out for a few more minutes. Just, oh, I like this. You know, very, very relaxed fit. I'll take off my makeup. We can sit here. Just so when we do these in the future, people at home, I'll undo you know, another button. Yeah, amazing uh you'll you'll know what you meant you actually you won't know what you missed so you should get on the patreon at patreon.com slash late night leave yeah, us a review and, on apple uh, podcasts and spotify and all the places please tell your friends about this show yes please uh for those of you who watch this uh let us you know this is our first time as i said using this new platform here uh tech tech wise it seemed to work great but if there's anything you think we could do to make this better uh i'm not interested in your opinion so <laughs> that's what it is uh no seriously like if there's if there's stuff you think we could do uh, i don't know if you noticed uh, i have this countdown thing that i could play no, uh, no, if you'd like to no! hear i'm so tempted to do it right now <laughs> uh, i'm so laden the more you say don't the more i want to do it well, if you're listening to this on the main feed, which is audio only, and you want to see the video and all of the very funny visual bits that have happened during this episode, or so if you many. want to participate in future chat live streams, which we will absolutely do, um, patreon.com slash late night. I don't know how to podcast. It's been four years and my brain is boiling inside my skull. See you next week for more of content. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye. Leighton Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Leighton Gray. Sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash Leighton Night. Follow us on Twitter at at Leighton Night, on Instagram at at Leighton underscore Night, or email us at LeightonKnight at gmail.com. <laughs>